All right, you guys, super excited for you to be joining us here on She's Crafted to Thrive. This is Nikita, your host. Guys, you know, it's like 11 o'clock. I have been having crazy random issues with computers again. Yes, again, if you guys have been following me and listening to the last few episodes, it has been quite a fiasco, but I am super excited to get this episode out to you guys. It is featuring Miss Christy Cross. She is a photographer who is doing amazing things. She's been in business for 13 years, you guys. I mean, how amazing is that? We talk about her experience, how she got started. And I mean, if you've been in business for 13 years, you're going to have ups and downs no matter what. And I think that's something I really appreciated from this episode is realizing that whether you're just beginning or whether you're on the long haul There are going to be ups and downs. You're going to have to make changes and shift in your business. And we talk about some really cool things. One of the topics we talk about is how to create connection with your product photography. So these are tips she shares with you, whether you are a photographer or a creative entrepreneur trying to do the photography Um, on your own. These are going to be great things to keep in mind. We talk about fear and how fear can be a very positive thing in your life, in your business, and how we can use that to fuel us instead of um, keep us down. So we talk about very specific things that we've needed or that she's gone through and even that I've gone through that really helps us to keep going and so many other things in between. So whether or not you're a photographer or a creative entrepreneur, or you're just a lady thinking about starting a business, you definitely want to stay tuned to this episode. So thanks for joining and I'll see you at the end of this episode. Welcome to She's Crafted to Thrive. I'm your host, Nikita Williams. And this show is for all the ladies who are making and creating things that they love. You will hear conversations about the real everyday struggles of juggling life and business while trying to maintain passion and harmony. As women, we have the skill of getting things done, but sometimes we get in our own way. It's here where you'll see that you're not alone. You'll discover that success does not mean perfection. Fear and negative thoughts and challenges are all a part of the journey. And on this podcast, you'll find the inspiration and tools you need to have a life and business that thrives. You guys, I am excited to have another awesome photographer on the show. Her name is Christy Cross, and I love her work. I've been kind of following her off and on on Facebook. She's, of course, you guys know, on Social Curator, and um, she's good friends with a lot of the women we've had on the show, so welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about you and your journey, like how you started Mm -hmm. this path in your life so I was interested in photography when I was in high school like in my senior year and just did it for fun had like a disposable camera at first (laughs) from the grocery store that was filmed because you know they didn't sell digital cameras at the grocery store at that time and um then I got a, a film camera for Christmas from my from my parents And started taking pictures. And I've always been artistic or creative in some way or another. And it just fell into my lap to where photography was kind of the thing that I grabbed onto more. And then I got my degree actually at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. And I got my degree in photography. And I learned how to just, you know, all the functions and learn how to do it through film and black and white film primarily and it was so much fun my major was in photography and my minor was also in photography so I was like just give me just give me the whole creative field and I'm good to go wow so that's that's how it started that's how it started and then here 13 years later um still been doing it and didn't ever think that I would work with people when I was pursuing it in college I wanted to take pictures of landscape or, I don't know, just still life. And working with people kind of scared me because I didn't know how to work with them and pose them. And it was very studio-like and like the way that we were taught. And I felt like it was a little stuffy for me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't quite connect with it. Then 
figured out how that can actually work with me and my personality and realizing that it doesn't have to be stuffy and that it can be fun and playful and you can capture movement and emotions. And um, once I realized that, I just I fell in love with it. And I love working with people. Yeah, your work is super cool that way. Um, I was looking at some posts the other day of your stuff, and it reminds me of another photographer that I used to f- follow a lot. Um, oh, my gosh. And her name is Slick My Brain. Oh, oh my you're going to have to tell me when you think of it. I want to know who it is. Um, so I'm a big fan of Sue Bryce, but there's another yeah. girl she does. She has beautiful. She has beautiful studio work yes beautiful beautiful but there's another woman and oh my gosh I'm I I became a fan of her when I was when we were doing photography way back when on creative live and she has Uh like all these kids she adopts like oh my gosh I cannot think of her name and she's like a she's like a family like photographer I mean she's super like big but anyway it's gonna drive me crazy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so we get off of this show and it's going to drive me crazy. But anyway, your work reminds me of hers because it's so like the little moments in between a shot. Like I feel mm-hmm. like it takes a really patient and amazingly eyed photographer to capture the moments in between because that's honestly mm-hmm. when the real stuff comes out, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you do an amazing job at doing that. Thank you. Thank you. I Yeah, those in between moments. Those are the ones that whenever I select favorites or I select ones to post and share mm-hmm. on my blog or on social media, those are the ones that, that I like to, to pull out and share. Yeah. You won't see very many of people smiling at the camera on my blog or on my website. I get those, but those aren't exactly my favorite. Those are the ones that I will get, like insurance, you know, you know that <laughs> someone's going to want that one. Right. But my favorites are the others the movement the com- the connections and the emotions those are the ones that I generally like to do yeah and then of course I do I do product photography too and I've since just like the the way that I connect that with working with people is just by me giving them something that they can be so excited about and wanting to share their product their baby their thing that they've made and by putting professional pictures um, with their with their product and their items, I feel like being able to create something for them is also just um, another way of me being able to work with people. I, I feel like this isn't coming out in the way that I want it to say. No, but... it makes sense. Okay, good, good. It makes sense to me anyway. Look, look, okay, <laughs> it's just saying it makes good, sense good. to everybody. If y'all are listening, you're like, I don't know what she's talking about. I get it <laughs> in the sense of like product photography. And I remember this like way back when, like my husband's really into product, like, he was like, I would do product photography forever. But I'm like, it's so, it, it felt sterile to me. I was mm-hmm. very much more attached to the people part of it. But mm-hmm. now stock photography or just photography of products to me can be like alive. It can give like yeah. the impression of someone's personality. Yeah. And uh, I know we were talking about this before the show, but you just did some for Crystal Lynn. And I just like, yes. it feels like her jewelry like it feels like you yeah. brought her jewelry which is an inanimate yeah. object to life like it yes. feels real and so yes that's again another talent that takes time to mm-hmm. <laughs> finesse and get to but um yes. yeah I totally get what you mean absolutely and that's kind of one of the things that for her she and I have we know each other already so this that one was a little bit easier to do but one of the things I do with clients that I don't know for product photography is I'll ask them questions or just get to know them um, via phone call or email to get a little bit more guidance of who they are, who they're wanting to, um, who, their, who their ideal client is. And so whenever I photograph their products that I will incorporate that and do more of a lifestyle shoot versus just a stock photo picture and I I will get those individual shots if that's what they want as well um with a plain background and plain and simple everything right. just so that their products will shine a little bit more but my favorite just like with people I love photographing the more lifestyle moments of those pieces of of like for her her jewelry those products the, that piece of jewelry working um in an actual day-to-day life for a woman right. who wears this jewelry yeah do you find that, like, this is completely, I'll go back to what I'm thinking in my head, but do you find that that kind of 
um, approach to it helps your your customers like sell more because of that kind of approach to it. Because I feel like when I go on to like other people's websites that have just like a standard like no background, I can't mm-hmm. imagine myself. Mm-hmm. like wearing it I feel like it's like walking into a house that's like nothing in it it's like so right. hard for you to imagine well what would that look like with this outfit right. or that outfit right exactly so creating that connection is what you have to give whenever you're doing product photography you have to show interaction in some way even if there's not a model there to show that interaction by holding it or wearing it Um, but if you can show some type of an interaction or connection of real life, the viewer can put themselves in the place of this photograph and think, okay, that's my countertop with my jewelry sitting on top of, um, I don't know, on top of this cute pink bowl. I'm thinking of one of the pictures (laughs) I did for her. There are a few pink bowls and they were bowls that you eat out of. So why would you put jewelry in it? I don't know, but it's it's just like the the other thing is like you know creating that soft palette that soft color palette it was a soft pink and then yeah. just creating shape so not necessarily it being a bowl but it being a circular shape um but just by creating those little connections by showing a real life moment i do think that it is great for their her clients now to relate mm-hmm. to that picture and say oh i want that piece of jewelry it's just so beautiful sitting there and I want that. So yes, right. that, that is something that I'm hoping um, that does happen. And I photograph food. I photograph skincare products. I photograph jewelry. I photograph um, aprons. Did I mention food? Because I know I did, <laughs> but I just, I love photographing food. And um, I've done stuff for a coffee shop. So I do the drinks, the coffee drinks. And I mean, like that is so much fun. I even photograph um, for a pharmacy. Hmm. And that you know, that, that could be sterile. That yeah. Could be I'm like, what are you doing for a pharmacy? <laughs> right. So, I mean, I feel like on that one, I am challenging myself hmm. incredibly because it is something that is not as like inviting. It's more of the thing that you have to get because your health is not, you're not doing too good. And so you have to find a way to make that human connection. And one of the ways is by showcasing the employees and showcasing their familiar and their friendly face. And when I can showcase that friendly face and the people want to come into this pharmacy and say, okay, I have to get my medicine because I have say arthritis, but I love coming and getting it from the pharmacy here because they are such friendly people or the different services that they offer. I try to portray them in a more somewhat upbeat way. Sometimes it, sometimes it works. And sometimes it's like, you know what? (laughs) <laughs> this is really not an upbeat matter, so right. we just need a plain and simple, straightforward thought, which actually just recently happened to me. I was like, too bright? Okay, I'll go back and reshoot that one. Yeah. Too cheerful, too cheerful. <laughs> yeah, wow. So, Wow, that is really cool. I mean, that's really cool, and I think it's, like you said, it's a great way to challenge yourself to kind of just yes. be and organic, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is interesting because there's not a lot of, photographers that I have physically met that went to school for photography mm-hmm. <laughs> like all the things they may have like I know did it as a minor even maybe but not yeah. as like a major and a minor mm-hmm. um so even I know a lot of the listeners that most of them who are photographers or who have even dabbled in photography did not come from that background right so what were some of the if you could name like some of the things that you feel like helped you Mm-hmm. like in your business as you, yeah. you know started to do this so I think for you know let me also just say this that the people that don't go and get their degree in college in photography for them to understand it and learn it all on their own like major props to you yeah, yeah because exactly. it's hard it really is hard and I teach it now at a at my community college in my town and I have to really think through slowing down the steps because when you're teaching the steps, it's like, wait, 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 go back, go back just two steps. Tell me that again. Okay. I got that now, but how do they work? How does the ISO and the shutter and the F-stop all work together? So if you can teach yourself that seriously props to you and thanks to YouTube as well. 
Um, I feel like me going to college and getting my degree did help me with that because I was able to take more time and focusing on how those little moments work. But also at the time I went, I was doing film, like digital photography was not offered at that time. But wait and, a second, wait a second, wait a second. Film photography, if I had mm-hmm. the patience, I think it is classic. There is no, yeah. there is nothing more amazing to me than a, than a film shot. I still to this mm-hmm. day, like if I can pick up a film camera and like take the time to make that my jam, oh my yeah. gosh, I believe those images are amazing. Yeah. And I think that that is what, I probably learned the most. I think that that is what maybe like gets me a one up maybe um, is because I was able to learn it through film. I couldn't, I didn't take a picture, check the back of my camera, which I do rely on that now. I mean, I I know what I'm doing, but there's times I'm like, okay, do I want to take these a couple stops down and make it darker? Do I want to make it lighter? And I can look at that and I can evaluate it now on the back of my screen. But with film photography, you can't do that. And so you have to know what you're doing. And we developed our own film. Like that was so much fun. Like I really feel, I feel silly saying this, but it was magical. It was a magical <laughs> time being in the dark room and getting to develop your own film and then develop your own photographs and enlarging your pictures. Like it was so much fun. And I recently, a few years ago, they have a black and white photography class at the community college in my town. And I took that class and I hadn't taken a film class in a long time and I had to relearn I was like wait a minute okay what what how did how does this work again but once I got back into it and remembered how to do it I was like I was in there all the time I'd try and go when it was just me and by myself because it's just such a fun like therapeutic time yeah Um, yeah. but I do feel like that being able to have it as my major and my minor and with my minor, I got to use a camera that was like, you know, the it was a four by five camera. So the camera that you stand up, it has like the accordion fold to it. You have to put a black <laughs> blanket over your head to see the picture and on the back of the camera so that you can take the picture. And that was another one of the fun things that I got to do that I wouldn't have been able to do on my own. So wow. I feel like that that was such a cool thing and it was so much fun yeah I think I don't know did that answer your question yeah I think I mean (laughs) um I feel like film photography teaches you to kind of be one with the camera um because you have to be like you have to to be patient right to be patient and to really think through getting it in the first two shots versus taking you know, holding your shutter down and taking 20 shots, <laughs> realizing they're all the same, mm-hmm. wasting space on mm-hmm. your digital card, on your CF card or your SD card and thinking, oh, I didn't need to do that. And so even now, whenever I take pictures, you won't hear me taking 20 shots of one deal unless I'm, wor- unless I'm working with kids who are like crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all those, like three-year-olds. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Because one's blinking, one's not. And then eventually they will both be looking at the camera at one point. But usually I will take my time and grab the shot I need instead of just taking a bunch and say, oh, I'll look at them later and see which one works. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I want to get it right now so that whenever I go and edit the pictures and cull through and select the ones that I want, it takes, it speeds up that process. Yeah. I bet it does. Yeah. My husband always says, yeah, if you can get the image almost perfect in the shot, yeah. your time afterwards will be less stressful for you. Like if you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're doing photography. So mm-hmm. let's talk about like, first of all, your mom. Yes. And so you have a family and you're running a business. You've been doing this for 13 years. Mm-hmm. What have been some challenges for you? So I have two boys and one's 11 and one's seven and they're complete opposite and (laughs) they're so much fun. And, um, I think the part that has helped me in my business is by my husband. Like he's, he's not just like, Oh, can I have your help? It's we're a team. So we work together whenever I do need a little bit more assistance or he needs a little bit more assistance. We help each other out Mm -hmm. and we balance each other out. And it's, so great like there's nights um even just last night where I'm still at the computer working and if I get up I will get distracted Mm. (laughs) and the family's home so it's at night 
it's dinner time and I should be in there eating dinner, but you know, this time I'm, I'm not in, I need to get things done. And like I said, if I get up, I'm going to get distracted. And here he comes in and he brings me a plate of, of dinner. And it was so helpful because I was able to still focus on this and he was able to help the boys and feed them and get them ready for bed and that kind of thing. So I feel like that that is a big help. And yes, there are challenges where days that um, maybe he's not able to be there because he's doing his work too. Mm-hmm. And the both of us just have to figure it out. And then you just have to close the computer down, walk away and just say, I'll get to it tomorrow. Yeah. And when you can figure out that balance of also just knowing that your family really does come first mm-hmm. um, by having the goals, whenever I can look at my goals too, that helps me be more mindful of my time when I am working to get focused and get to the point and yeah. don't dilly daddle around and look at social media and get distracted. But whenever I can look at my goal, I can stay focused on working for my family mm-hmm. um, by, by getting money for my family so that we can go do some fun things. Like that's kind of how I see that I, on my list of goals. It's places that we can go as a family, places that we can travel. And so that is one of the things that I, try to keep in the forefront. I'm not perfect and I don't do it every day, but um, that is something that helps me stay focused and keeps me somewhat more balanced with my work and my personal life. Yeah. Um, earlier when I started the show, like way, oh my gosh, it's been over a year now. I feel so funny saying that, but one of the, <laughs> one of the, I, I does like, I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, like anyway. So um, one of the um, episodes, the girl said, you know, it's like finding harmony with all of your things. Like we use the yeah. word balance with everything, but like everybody's balance is different. And which mm-hmm. thus leads you to thinking harmony, like not everybody's harmony goes well with each other. Yes. But I actually your- just read something along with the harmony. I forget what it was. Maybe you know the quote. I don't know. Maybe you're about to say it. And I just I, I have no, no, I wasn't going to say <laughs> quote. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It, it, she probably said the quote, and I'm just thinking about the word harmony. Like everyone's harmony is going to be different in different families, mm-hmm. and the fact that you can work together and find those things and have mutual goals and work together is like, yeah, really great to have in mind. Mm-hmm. So, what are some fears? Like, I know I feel like do you do you have less fears because you have had like that like technical training in photography or do you deal with fear in a different way? Well, you know, there's always the fear of, am I going to disappoint a client? Are they going to be happy with what they got? So there's always that. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, sometimes I'll just wait. If I haven't heard from them, I'll think, okay, do they like it? Do they like it? (laughs) And I have to remind myself that they have other things to worry about that. I'm not the forefront on their brain. Like they are doing their own thing and they've got kids and they've got a family and they'll get to me when they get to me. Um, and then the other fear, when you had asked me this in the email earlier, it wasn't so much about technical stuff. It was one of my biggest fears that I had to overcome was a few years ago, I wasn't, I wasn't in a mindset of creating goals. Like I used to always think like, I don't need, I don't need to create goals. I'll just do life and go with the flow. (laughs) And I was not a hard worker, just plain and simple. I wasn't a hard worker. I would do the jobs. I would work with the clients that would come back to me year after year, but I wasn't doing a good job at promoting myself and trying to get more clients or trying to um, figure out ways to get more revenue. And like, I just wasn't, I, I was, I was getting lazy, mm. plain and simple. I was getting lazy. Were you like so, settled? Like, were you feeling like, just like you're yes. good where you were? Yes. And, and two, it was, you know, it's like around the winter time and the springtime. And I usually know that that's a little bit slower time at this time. Now it's not. Now I feel like that it's generally pretty even balanced throughout mm. all, throughout the whole year. Um, because I have figured out ways to mm. make myself continue having work throughout those months. But at this, you know, at this time, three, about three years ago, I was like, I know that it's slower and that's just what it is. And I'm not making chance. I'm not making time to go and make more work for myself. And I've also was probably burned out. I, I was primarily doing 
portrait photography and wedding photography. Ooh, and girl. I didn't do, I didn't do any product photography. I was just doing portraits and weddings. And so and I didn't weddings. do product and commercials. And, oh. um, I think I was burned out. And so I wasn't really inspired to go and do pictures. Well, all this to say that my bank account for my business was almost gone. Mm-hmm. And the fear of me losing my business that I had built up for 10 years. Wow. Like that was a fear and that mm-hmm. woke me up and, and my husband had to have a hard talk <laughs> with me. Like you're going to have to do something now, like with your business or you're going to have to go get another job. And I was like, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, like humility was setting in. And I was like, no, like, no. Right. And, <laughs> When that happened, I, I just, I started getting myself into gear and I started listening to podcasts. I hadn't listened to podcasts before. <laughs> I run and whenever I usually run, I would listen to music. Well, now when I run, I listen to podcasts and I listen to audibles and I love it. And I barely listen to music. And that is like a totally different person of who I was three years ago. Wow. Um, so I, that was, that was my fear. When you asked me that question, that's the first thing that came up to my mind. And so now keeping goals and staying plugged in with groups like Social Curator and listening to other people who are mentors to me online. They don't know that they're my mentor, but they are. Mm -hmm. And um, just staying plugged in with people who are also motivated and building their business helps motivate me and helps keep me going in my business as well. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for sharing that because that's a big deal. Like <laughs> I was thinking while you were talking, I was like, yeah, I wonder if I, I'm, I might be somewhere in the middle of that where I don't even figuring out where I need to go next, you know, mm-hmm. figuring out what do you need to do? You can get in such a rut of the rinse yeah. and repeat, rinse and repeat. And then you feel like, okay, what now, you know? in your mm-hmm. business, especially when you've been doing it for so long, you're just like, yeah. okay, what can freshen this, this world for me? Yes. Yes. And I tell you what, now I've got like, I teach a digital single lens reflex. Basically that means basic photography. I teach a basic photography class. I teach an iPhone class or a smartphone class. It can be any smartphone. I teach at the community college, um, basic photography. And I have a digital photography class that I'm working to have online now, which was a huge thing for me to even get to that point because I love that human connection. Yeah. Um, and then I also sell presets. So I'm like, girl, I like, I look at like, you. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's, let's be an entrepreneur and have some fun with it. I don't need to be a sale entrepreneur. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to do something that I enjoy and I'm going to now start doing product photography and I've been doing that for almost two years. And it has just by, I think too, when you can just like push past that fear, which is, which is hard. Yeah. Once you push past that fear and I try to teach this to my 11 year old all the time, because he's very much an introvert when you don't know him mm. and he's in middle school right now. Oh my gosh. So I'm like, buddy, you just have to push past that fear. And when you do, you will be so proud of yourself. Mm-hmm. So I think that that has helped me. Um, you had asked me about a quote. As well, I'm jumping, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Talking okay. about quotes. But one of the quotes was by James Wedmore and it says, when it gets hard, just remember, this is the point at which everyone else gives up. So yes. I try to keep that in mind too. Yes, yes, yes. That thought, that quote that he's he says, makes me think about so many people that I have seen like over the years who have start and stop, start and stop something Mm -hmm. and like something brand new. They don't start and keep like stop and do the same thing better. They start and start something new. They don't Mm -hmm. stick with the old thing. (laughs) Um, It's like such a good point because every now and then if you look back at the people that were kind of in the same place as you, but stuck with what they were doing, even though they may have taken breaks or whatever the mm-hmm. case may be, they're in like way bigger places now. Like they're in way bigger places than you could yeah. ever have imagined. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that, that that's, that's what you did. Basically that's what you did. You just took a moment. Yes. It was like, not necessarily how you want it to happen. <laughs> right. But that's fear. But yeah. it was like, okay, yeah. I need to re 
shift and rethink about what I need to do to make this be successful. And that's what yes, doing. yes, yes. And another one that I look to see if I made this up or if I <laughs> stole this from someone else and I couldn't find it. So I, I put my name on this okay. one, but I say, don't let fear stop you. Let fear drive you. And maybe you're going to be like, Christy, so-and-so actually says that. Girl, you, you, think that you know, there's some good quotes. <laughs> I know, I know. But I like that one. But it's true. It's like, don't let fear stop you. Let it drive you. Let it, let it motivate you. And again, I just get fired up whenever I think about my son. Mm. I want, I want him to be motivated. Yeah. So yeah, fear can, can either, can either hinder you or it can fuel you. Like it's one of those things, right. like how you were just saying with your dream, like your, your like moment of like, aha, like I need to do something. Cause it was like, mm-hmm. I might not have my business anymore. <laughs> we yeah. think of fear of like a, such a negative way. Um, but it can have sometimes that, that's what lights the fire. Exactly. exactly. Sometimes it can have that positive influence on you where you're like, mm-hmm. Oh, that's the fire I need to get my butt into gear and to work, <laughs> right. Like, so I think that's amazing that you shared that because we do talk about fear in a very negative way, but it does have its place. There's a reason why it's mm-hmm. there sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we use the right mindset shifts, it can get us to, to, to do the work. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What are some of your favorite moments in your business? I asked, this is not one of the questions I asked you, but I'm asking. I'm like, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I throw random questions in here. That's good. Um, Because I, you know, a lot of the women I have on the show have either been in business for, you know, three to five years. And I've Mm -hmm. had a handful of business owners who've been on in business for more than eight. So there obviously are like ups and downs and a business has been in business for so long, but there are mm-hmm. amazing moments. So I want to know what. Yeah. Amazing. Gosh, you know, I guess really this may be kind of just a big, broad, a broad one, but when people genuinely email me right back, when I send them their web gallery of their pictures or they get to see a sneak peek and they're like, I'm crying. <laughs> this is beautiful. I love them. I don't even know. I'm speechless. I like, I, I've had emails like that. And when I get that, I'm like, okay, I did my job. I did my job. I got those moments that help them be able to see their kids in the fun and energetic mm. and, and sweet side. I was able to give them that gift. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like that that's just like the biggest compliment ever yeah. to receive something like that. And, um, when I do, and especially for clients that keep coming back to me year after year, I have some clients that I'm picking pictures for them tomorrow, and they've been coming to me for 12 years. Oh my and god! So, and they have wow. five kids. They have five kids, and two of them are now in college, and one of them's a high school senior, and then the other two are still in school, in high school and junior high. So. All this to say, I've been with this family for 12 years. And wow. so I'm having to be creative every single year. I'm like, what are we going to do different this year? And for them to keep coming back and telling me, mm-hmm. like for them to just keep coming back, period. Right. Me clients, that's the hugest compliment too. Yeah. Well, one, that means you're doing a great job in like not shoot and burn. This is what I call shoot and burn. Yeah. So many photographers, I have coached so many photographers where they're like, oh, I can't keep with my business like I don't I don't have any more clients and I'm like but did you have clients before (laughs) and they're like Mm -hmm. well yeah I had like 30 sessions last year I'm like how many of them came back Mm -hmm. and they're like um none of them and I'm like well did you call them did you send a thank you card did you Mm -hmm. like just follow them Mm -hmm. on Instagram are you DMing them like what's going on Mm -hmm. they're like no and I'm like well that's why you don't have any more business yeah Yeah, it's true. You have to keep that connection. And I feel like you can, you instantly make that connection when you, when they book their session or whenever they email you, you show genuine excitement that they've reached out to you. And then one of the things that I try to remind myself whenever I'm talking to a client or whenever I see a compliment on Instagram, like, Oh, this picture is so great. I, I, I'm like, it's not about me. This picture is not about me or them coming to me 
um, as a, as a client, it's not about me. It's them wanting pictures of their family. It's the picture of their family. And so I have to remember that this is not about me, but I need to talk to them about them and about their kids and about their family. And the moment that was so fun in that picture, like when someone sees a picture of a family picture, for example, and they're like, Oh, I love this picture. I'm like, yes, that family was so great. They were so much fun. Their kids were hilarious. They kept making these goofy faces or, you know, I don't know. I don't go into like, well, I mean, I don't do like a whole paragraph, (laughs) but I do like to make sure that it isn't about me. And so you have to make that connection with your client and make them feel comfortable and make them feel wanted and make them feel like, you know, that they can come back to you. Yeah. Um, And some, and some I do and some I don't. And I have some people that I know that they hop around and they like to go to different photographers. I've noticed that. Yeah. And that's fine too. Yeah. And maybe they just get an idea and do research on their own of how other photographers do it. And I think that's pretty smart. Yeah. I think it's awesome what you just said though, for other people that are out there, like it's not about you, it's about them and even how you respond Mm -hmm. to and like what people are saying to you about your work on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like that's such a good reminder, I think for everyone, whether you're a photographer or web designer or whatever, it's like, how was the experience for them? Like, talk about yeah. how it was amazing to be working with them mm-hmm. and that in turn makes someone think oh wow they're not even you know owning that like they took the picture but you know what I'm saying it's just really cool how you brought that out and I really that hit me that hit me so sure it hit everybody I have to, else I have to remind myself that often because it yeah. is nice when you get a compliment but it's like and, and you should say thank you you should mm-hmm. you should mm-hmm. say thank you you should never diss a compliment you should always say thank you but then also remember why you did it yeah so there was like three different quotes in that conversation just right there that I will (laughs) definitely be putting on the show notes um because I love that like it really hit me it resonated with me and and something just to keep in mind and I um it kind of reminds me you know it's biblical but your yes mean yes your no mean no something about just letting it be what it is about those people and like you said this was for them. So let it be mm-hmm. for them. And I just, mm-hmm. I, I love that. So mm-hmm. what are some tips since we're talking about like successful things that you would give another entrepreneur or woman in business, um, running their business? Okay. So I would say, um, know the business side of it. I feel like that for me, that was one of the things that I didn't really know. And you will gradually know that because I feel like that that's what has happened for me. I have learned business things through experience. Um, I didn't get my degree in any business thing Mm. at all. So that was, that's one thing that I would say is, is don't shy away from learning the business side of it because that is what is going to keep you going. You can be creative and you can do photography and, or you could do, I don't know what you could create, um, letterpress products, right? But if you don't know how to keep the business going, then you're going to struggle and you're going to bottom out. And if you're interested in wanting to just change and do something else later, that's fine. And you can bottom out in that one thing and then go try it in another thing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to stay consistent and you want to keep this being your job, plug in with a group like social curator or go to conferences Mm -hmm. that are about business. Um, Another one that I really wish that I was at right now is the, um, Oh gosh, the business boutique with Christy, Wright. It's going on right now. Yeah. And I wish that I was at that one. She is awesome. So that just reminds me too, like if you can't go to a conference or you can't be a part of a group because of money or anything, just listen to podcasts and start Mm -hmm. writing notes because all of those podcasts is basically free education for whatever you want to learn about, but yeah. specifically business. And uh, the business boutique with Christy Wright is really awesome. And that's something, that's one that I have really gained a bunch of knowledge from, from her. Um, but I mean, you can, if so podcasts, workshops. I mean, there's so many things. There's like, so many things. If there's you're so feeling things. like you don't know how to run a business, just go to Google mm-hmm. and YouTube. It is, like, you know, one person I learned a few years ago that, you know, you think for me, for example, I'm in photography. I should probably learn from other photographers that are more elite than me. 
but it doesn't have to be that. You can mm-hmm. learn business from someone who's in a completely different business field yes. than you. Like my dad, he sells insurance. He sells farmer insurance, like crop insurance. And <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's, that's totally wow, different. Wow, that's totally different. different. You no, know, it's totally different than what I do. But the way that he does business, I learned from that. He's very personable. He's always about the people. And I've learned that from him. And he's also taught me like to work smarter, not harder. Mm. And I think that that's, again, that that's something that I've learned from him who does something completely different than me. But you can learn different business etiquette or business ways through other people in different fields. And I, I challenge people to do that because it is interesting to see and gather information and do your research of how other people do business and how they stay in business. Yeah, I totally agree with you. There's a book called Blue Ocean. Um, oh, and it's I'll basically, I think it's called Blue Ocean or uh, guys, the notes. You guys know, if you want to really know what I was talking about in the show, you have to go to the show notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but the will, book is, I will. Yeah, but the book is talking about how all these really amazing companies that now we are like, what, who thought of that? What they basically did was look in other industries. And then they look what was missing. And then it was like, boom, like, for example, Airbnb. Come on. Who thought of Airbnb? Like, there's tons. So simple, right? But someone thought, man, there's a lot of hotels and it's so expensive. Like somebody had to look out some out of something different. Maybe they looked at the boutique model and was thinking about retail. And then they came up with this idea about hey, we could do this with other Genius. people's homes, right? Like, so Genius. It, exactly. So it works like, if you are going to try to learn from other people, it it enriches your whole experience of running a mm-hmm. business. It mm-hmm. makes it a lot easier for you. Plus then you have like all these network fingers in the universe talking to different people yeah. that you, you know, that you can connect with. So it really yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So how can we find you? Like, how can we find you online? And and do you have any cool, exciting things coming up in your business? Um, okay, so first on Instagram and on Facebook, my handle is Christy Cross Photo. Um, and it's C-R-I-S-T-Y-C-R-O-S-S Photo. My website is ChristyCross.com. And um, anything exciting coming up? Oh, gosh. I feel like... Yes. What is it? I don't remember. Um, I am, I, I am working on my digital photography course that will be coming up. I don't have a date on that, but I'm getting that going and I have my second round of presets that I will be putting out. Um, and gosh, I'm going to kick myself if I forget something and telling you, but so Basically, I'm just follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll tell you all about it there if I forget it here because it's there on social media for sure if I forget something now. But there's always something coming up and I love I love being able to do things spontaneously. So like sometimes that's the best way I work. I'm like, Do you want to do you wanna do this gig? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it right now. Let's yeah. do it right now. That's cool. So. You know, I think that's really great if you have that kind of personality go for you. (laughs) Um, But tell us, I do want you to tell us about your, um, you have a, a, uh, I can't talk. You have a um, phone course. The the smartphone course? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So I have a smartphone course and that started through um, a friend approaching me saying, hey, we want to do these different events at our coffee shop. It's a brand new coffee shop in our town. They've been here for almost two years now. And she just wanted to have an event there. And one of the events could have been doing, teaching a smartphone class. And so I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm a little nervous. And I decided, go for it. Just mm-hmm. go for it. I already teach a class at CCC. Or sorry, that's what it's called. You don't know what that even means. But it's the, <laughs> it's the community college here. And I was like, you teach people. It's fine. You'll be fine. Just go with it. And I've been doing, um, I've done it, I guess, maybe three or four times there. I can, I'm going blank on how many times I've done it there. And then since then, I've actually done private classes with their own grouping. So one class is for a person that does, um, they actually train horses. And they wanted their students to learn how to take better pictures of their horses so that they can get their horses adopted out to people. 
Wow. And so they brought me in to teach them how to use their, their phone. Wow. And, take pictures. and then another one has been, um, a mops group, like a mom's moms of preschoolers. And so I, now I have these private groups that are like, Hey, we want to learn how to do photography with our phone. But what I've also done is I put out a free camera phone workshop. Um, the one that I do in person, I do give you more information. So that one is a paid one, but the one that I have free online, it is free. And there's a lot of great tips on there. So if you want to learn how to use your smartphone, Google phone, Samsung, iPhone, whatever it is, um, I can teach you. Now the new iPhone 11, I don't have that information on there. I actually still only shoot with a 6S plus. So that's like way, 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 way back. Like, super old compared to the one that we have now. So these things that you could learn on your, on your phone, I mean, you don't have to have a fancy phone to learn. And if you do more power to you, because they're probably going to be amazing. Um, But yeah, so I have that too. And I have that link in my um, profile on Instagram and it's just titled free camera workshop or free smartphone workshop, something like that. So I am definitely go and grab it. I'm definitely going to check it out. I think I signed up for it. I just haven't <laughs> had the bandwidth to check yes. it out to like yes. actually look <laughs> at it, but I definitely want to check it out because there is, um, I would like to get a new camera camera, but I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. have time for that. Like, and I've taken just yeah. random shots with my Samsung, like the new galaxy Samsung. And I'm amazed and at like what? how amazing. Those, those things look. Yeah. Those cameras, those Samsung phones are the camera quality is amazing yeah so i'm like it really is. i just think i need to learn how to use my phone on my mm-hmm. camera so anyway. yeah yeah <laughs> well you guys uh we have miss christy on i'm so excited thank you so much for being on the show i loved it it was it was a blast it was a blast thank you so much All right, ladies, that's a wrap for this episode of She's Crafted to Thrive. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share with your friends and be sure to like and subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. In the meantime, check us out at she'scrafted.com to check out the show notes for all the goodies and things that we talked about. And there'll be links there for you guys. So in the meantime, just remember, you are crafted to thrive.